Good morning, wherever you following us today, happen to be an opportunity for us to meet with presidential aspirant for Liberia 2023 election, uh, the human right, uh, human political activist, Mr. Tiwan Gonglu, who is in Lufa County to tell the people of Lufa why he should be elected as president come October 10th. Sir, welcome to the media. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, today it's we want to know. Today is your first time coming to Fuya? No. You've been in the Fuya? I came here before. For a while now? That's a long time when I was Solicitor General. Okay, and. Way back. 2007, now that you arrived here overnight, can you tell us what are some of the changes you have seen? Well, when I came in uh, during that period, uh, I didn't see the paved cement. Um, I didn't appear in at a radio station. I don't think there was a radio station here at that time. Ombe was around, but I don't remember the radio station being here. And I didn't go to many places. I went to Shallow and saw Tamatilla grave, I think. Yes. Okay, now I come to the real issue. What is your call of visit for uh, Tolufa? I'm here because I'm a presidential aspirant. I'll be running in the 2023 election on the ticket of the Liberian People's Party as a presidential candidate. And um, power belongs to the people, so I have to come to the people to explain to them why I want to run, for them to know me, because I'm a well-known individual in this country by radio and television, social media, and newspapers. But there are many people who don't know me. Like some people saw me large and say, oh, we thought it was a tall man, a fat man. Very old man. So I came around for people in Lofa to know me. I've not only been uh, to this country, I've been to Grand Bassa River says my own country in Nimba, my mother's country, uh, Bond County, and I've gone to over 220 to 20 towns, mm. you know, so that the people can know who is called Councillor Tiawango. For them to ask me questions and to know me better. So I'm um, I'm coming around. It's an outreach program. Voter education, voter awareness. But uh, we know that coming to Lofa is a challenge, especially when it comes to our road network. And uh, will you be coming here the prior to the election? The prior I hope so. Uh, on this trip, I, I don't think you want to just say challenge. You should qualify. A very big challenge to come to Lofa. But I came in a three-car convoy. Each of those cars have, have had uh, ongoing serious repair. Um, got broken uh, on the pickup. The uh, propeller stopped that turned the tire got broken. Uh, the bulge on one of the cars, the bulge on the left side, was fixed, a, a gas spoiled when we got to Zulu. On another day, on our way here, the boy on the other side, on the passenger side, uh, jumped out. So we'll be fixing vehicles. We spend more than $2,000 on vehicle repairs on this trip. Mm. Uh, and that's why I'm not going to Vahu on this trip, because I wanted to go to Vahu, but everyone I've talked to, I've talked to here has said, don't take that risk because you will go with a three car convoy and you'll come back by motorbike because they are 52 hills and they are very challenging hills, they are very tall hills, taller than any hill here in Foya. So, you know, you can't force it, it does not fit on this trip. I've been told that many of the politicians who go down from the front go through Serena. So I'll use that same route, uh, since the road is, is in complete disrepair. Okay, uh, now looking at your motto, it's a government is a place to serve, not to see. Can you tell us in detail about that? It is as simple as that. Government is a place to serve the people. If you're a policeman, it is to protect life and property. If you're a minister, it is to use the money provided for your ministry to provide the services that government uh, in 
tents for the people. But you cannot go there and take that money for yourself. So when you go and take the money for yourself, that's stealing. That's not serving. You are serving your own interest, which is stealing. And that is what is keeping this country backwards. That's why Liberia is going backward and Serum, Africa Coast and Guinea are going forward. Because there's more stealing in our government than serving. Okay, um, let me understand from you because when you told us initially that you, are, you want to come into say uh, what are those things you think you what are those new things you bring in on board that those that have been there before has not been able to achieve good question i have a 10 point agenda for a better liberia for transforming liberia to a better country for changing Liberia's story among the 10 point agenda I like to talk about four that cut across the line that affect both the citizens of Liberia in urban areas and the rural areas. One, I strongly believe that all Liberian children have a right to education. Article 6 of the Constitution mandates the government of Liberia to educate all Liberian children, especially at the lower level. So when I become president, I'm going to make education free from kindergarten to 12 grade. I also think that all librarians should have access to school training. All men started that, but government has continued that. So when companies come in this country, young people don't get jobs because they're not qualified. They're not heavy duty mechanics, they're not companies. When I become president, I intend to open free trade schools in the 15 counties for the young people on the motorbikes. The young girls who are going from market to market, when they get old after 40, they may not be able to do that to sustain themselves. But when they are mechanics, when they are tailors, when they are, when they are uh, uh, carpenters, they will be able to sustain themselves. When they are business. Therefore, when you do that, then you have programs. A lot of pregnant women die in our country. A lot of young children below the age of five die. High infant mortality. A lot of old people die. So when I become president, I will mandate that pregnant women, young children under five, and elderly like girls from 65 years old have free access to health care. The, the third thing that in this country, you can eat uh, yam with gravy and your stomach will actually be full after you drink water. At around 8 o'clock, even 9 o'clock, by 2 o'clock, somebody asks you, have you eaten today? You will say no. I'm not eating enough food. I'm only eating uh, yam this morning. Why? Because the only thing we consider as food is rice. But today, according to the United Nations statistics, out of every 100 bags of rice that Liberia people consume, less than 20 bags of rice are produced in this country. Which means we are food insecure. If India stops selling rice here, if America stops selling rice here, we will be all in the street and dying. Therefore, as president, president like a part of a nation. We are in a state of emergency when it comes to food. We are so insecure. When I become president, instead of giving money to rice importers as the government library to win a large like the government library gave eleven million dollars to rice importers to stabilize the price of rice, I wouldn't do that. It's not a sustainable program to make rice available. I would rather take money to buy rice farming machines and give it to the rice farmers throughout the country to the farmers cooperatives and supervised by the cooperative development agency on a credit basis that the farmers who pay government library in 15 years will have the yield through rice production giving government rice. This is a sustainable way to make rice enough in this country to keep the price on right there and to even carry it down and to make it available all the time. That is how we wipe our hunger. I will also give order to the army, whatever I call your battalion, I will give order to the army to go to war against hunger by producing not less than 100 acres of rice in each of the 15 countries. As commander in chief, I will give that order to the army. The army role is to attack our enemy and to defend us against our enemy. Right now, we do not have 
and enemy in terms of any country for them. But we are paying the army, we've been paying them since 1908 as a frontier force. We're giving them guns, we're buying uniforms, but now we're feeding them. We're not getting anything from them, except the librarians that are now serving the UN forces. No, we need to use them in a more beneficial way. So I'll give all to the army to go to war against hunger and produce more rice. And I strongly believe the army is producing rice, and our farmers are producing rice. There will be so much rice in the country that the price of rice will go down. Like bro, my graduate become a rice exporter. The next thing that you want to do is real connectivity and governmentalism. You may be young, but long time ago, on a president, Tubman, Tubman, do government have power yards everywhere. Foya, Blau, Wajama, Zozo, and we kept yellow machines in the power yard that were maintaining the roads. Our roads are never like this. Today, six months of the year, you cannot leave from Vajama to go to Banga easily. You cannot use any small car, even the trunk just stuck. And so it is increasing poverty in the country because the productive people who are growing a plantain and other things cannot get there to the big market in Monrovia because the roads are poor. So if they can they sell their produce, they get poorer. So this government is multiplying poverty by its negligence of trade of the team in the world. I'm going to change that because this is an idea. You have been a human rights advocate over the years, like you said. You have been a councilman over the years, like you said. Why do you want to leave the advocacy and get involved in the politics? How will you reconcile the two, advocacy and politics? You know, those who advocate have good ideas. You criticize because of no better ideas. But criticism and recommending are easy things to do. It doesn't take the work. The sacrifice you do is something you go to jail that I've got to jail on a tailor and talk about. But doing is more difficult. Maybe it's difficult to do for some people. Not difficult for me to do because I was Deputy Minister of Trust and Solicitor General. I was Minister of Labor and I perform. I don't know why it is difficult for people to perform. For example, it's not being corrupt. I'm not being corrupt in all of the, 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 the positions I've had. There is no insert in the government that bites you to be corrupt, to be automatically corrupt. So people say, oh, as soon as you get the government, you can listen to them, not true. People are already corrupt in the government. People are lazy in the government. So I used to be the first to go to work. I the Ministry of Labor, Ministry of, of Justice, and I lost to be. I perform I was not corrupt. I believe I will be criticized of government because you don't have better ideas. So if you have a cook, and every time you dismiss your cook because you're cooking, cook up, you say, I can cook very quick about you. Then get to the kitchen and cook, instead of complaining. So as an advocate, we complain, we recommend, and nothing happens. I've been doing that for more than 50 years of my life. So I want to get there and show the better way to govern, that it is doable, that Liberia can be a better country, that we can change that restaurant from where it is today. The last question. Yeah, thank you. The last question, as you heard from my friends, we are seeing in all of your files, you see the broom, where you stand with the broom, uh, showing the symbol, because we see that if a woman is standing with a broom, we want to clean a place. So what is the meaning of this thing with the broom? This broom is a symbolic notice to all corrupt people who are in God and the corrupt people that want to serve in God. That we are on a mission to run the thing God. Corruption is a drive that is making Liberia not to shine. The oldest independent country in Africa. That is making all of the other countries to shine and Liberia not to shine. So I want to get the government to so corruption out of government. Uh, and I cannot do it alone because it brings corruption from government and run a clean government. How will I see corruption from government? When you are a minister, first thing, I will put the president's salary and benefits and all the minister's salary and benefits, as well as the salary and benefits of the head of the judiciary, the legislature, everybody in government's salary on the internet. For you journalists to see, it will be in the leading newspaper. It will be on simple, in simple English on the radio station. Then everybody knows your salary. So if a person is minister and you know his salary and benefits 
And even asset declaration is not more than 50000 When you start bidding $200,000 in two months and three months, you have the confidence to say, this minister is stealing. You can go from my computer here, from my phone, I know his salary. Where are you getting the money from? Then on top of that, we're doing what we call quarterly lifestyle audit. Every three months, the auditor will go around to audit the expenditure pattern of the president and the ministers of government. Okay. When the record shows that your expenditure exceeds your income, President Gongo will dismiss you, turn you off to the Liberal Anti-Corruption Commission for further investigation and prosecution. When you are found guilty, you go to jail for five to ten years. And all the remaining assets will be taken away from you, including your money. And I strongly believe that when five persons go to jail, ministers go to jail, no minister or any official government wants to steal money. No Malaysian director wants to steal money. And more than that, it will make the people of the Liberian people life secure because there are some old good medicine men and we will tell them bring him up behind, bring him up behind or bring him up in level so that you can be minister, so that you can be representative, so that you can be like a senator. But when we kill corruption in government and the government is no more attractive, in our money, in our street again, nobody wants to kill somebody again in the government. So fighting corruption will have two dividends. It will have it, it will uh, 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 secure enough money for us to care our social services for the people like to protect their life and also it will be a means of securing the lives of all like very people children will not disappear they will be all harmed that's how I think about it and these things I'm saying no presidential can I have said them before that's to further answer your question these are the things I want to do differently that no one has done before Okay, finally, thank you for accepting our invitation and we appreciate that uh, you always be at our door, especially when it comes to making the Liberian people to understand. Now, as you are living, what is the problem coming, especially when it comes to building this present government? I want to thank the people of Oya first. And I want to express my deep gratitude to the people of Oya for their condolences to the Tamar Taylor family because they lost Parliament Chiefs in Tamar. Uh, when I was coming to Lofa, I was warned in Mandela that I can go to all parts of Lofa, but I should not step in Fuya because it is a, an unfriendly political terrain for a non J and Joseph M. Barker person or a non citizen that the United Party have enough people here to protect their political leaders. CDC had enough people here to protect the political leaders. That I was a new person coming, and just hearing that I'm trying to disturb the political terrain, I could be physically harmed. But seeing it, believe me, I came here yesterday and I saw very hospitable people. I was in Fuya as if I was in my hometown place of you. The level of hospitality shown, the level of, of love shown by the full life Fuya. Uh, for your people was unexpected and I just want to thank them and I want to say in the public space for everyone that FOIA is just a level playing field politically in many places in Liberia. So I want to thank FOIA for encouraging them to continue to behave this way. You know in a democratic space people can disagree but it's good to respect the people who come and not to make people afraid. I saw no fear for them about five 40 this morning, I will walk in the street, I exercise, I walk on all sides, I, I reach to all ends of the pavement, and things are fine. So I want to thank you for that, people. And we still have time. Those who serve the government, I still want them to turn around and serve the people rather than still. So that the little time we have until October, we can do something. Because I'm going in October, all of them are leaving. The library will soon have a power because they are now serving their still. Thank you. Thank you so much.